people don't pay attention in terms of all the promises that the Prime Minister, the Prime Minister Andrew Owens, you understand, coming out with. Remember, you know, that all the promises that he made in his first 100 days, not one being delivered. So let me show you now another item. And, and, and this is very critical. This is very critical. And I want people to understand that when you look on the Andrew Owens led administration and the amount of money that they borrowed from the IMF and the World Bank, you understand the people are now facing the austerity measures and Jamaica, Mawani, you know, because inflation is going to increase. Let me say this to you from now. So I am going to show you, right, one of the items, the, 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 the critical items that was to fix where the prime minister even went further to say he had allocated the money. He has the money and I know, right, that cannot be fulfilled. And remember, you know, people, Nigel Clark had departed. And remember that Nigel Clark had not addressed the budget shortfall. So we need to bear that in mind because so much things that they are promising, right, they cannot deliver. Now, look at these people. Let me just take the Jamaican people through the evidence to show that, listen to me, don't pay Angie Owens any mind. Right? Right as we speak, I am surprised that he, know, uh, that, he, that he has not yet promised that Jupiter is going to come to Jamaica at the rate he is going. Right? So don't pay him any mind in terms of him promising and him this and that and Trelawney, Oasis, you understand, Portmore, this and Ray Ray, blah, blah, blah. You understand? The project that he's talking about in, um, in Portland, right? Those are projects that are being assisted by PSOJ and so forth and so forth. So we understand that. But the other rest of things that the Prime Minister is promising, they are not going to be delivered. And I'm going to show the evidence. Evidence number one, let us go into this. Now, Jamaica Observer. So we are going to use the Prime Minister chosen platform, you know, because in claims the gleaner, you understand, no good. So we are going to use the Jamaica observer that the prime minister, you understand, like. So let us use his own medium and show you something. Let us let us let us find out find out the evidence here. Yes. Okay. So let us find out the evidence here. And I'm going to show because people are suffering under Andrew Owens. You understand, and the bundle of promise. Promises that he's not going to deliver. People, let me show you the date. You know. All right, so this came out um, November 1st, 2024. Yeah, no, no, I'm, say, I'm saying when it came out. Today is the, it's today's date. That's okay. February All right. So, more far bridges in new physical ear bid um, here, but Phillips won Tri Bridge prioritized, and people look at the date February 19. 2023. Remember, you know, remember the date, people. February 19, 2023. So, make a read on. Now, the Troy Trelawney with the government proposing to spend an estimated 1.3 billion on bridge repair and maintenance in the 2023-2024 fiscal year. Remember, you know, and remember, say the 2024 soon completed, you no know, people. We are now in November. So let me remind the people. We are now in November. And here what the Prime Minister said here. Proposing to spend an estimated 1.3 billion on bridge repair and maintenance in the 2023 and 2024 fiscal year. Member of Parliament for Manchester Northern Western Michael Phillips has reiterated the need for a bridge here to be replaced urgently. Since the Troy Bridge collapsed in August 2021, as 2021, the bridge collapsed in the people. School children and other residents have been using makeshift methods, including a falling tree and a zip line comprising a rope and bucket to cross the river. The risky makeshift footbridge connects residents in the neighboring communities of Covic Park in northwestern Manchester 
to try in Southern Trelawney. Since the bridge collapsed, residents have had to use a 15 mile alternative commute for safety. Philip Stone, the Jamaica Observer, last week, following the tabling of the estimate of expenditure in the House of Representatives, that he hopes the bridge replacement will be treated as an emergency. Now, here now, in quote, it is an urgent matter. Just imagine how urgent other matters are. And yes, it will come down to cash flow. But if you look at the upcoming financial year's budget, you will see that normally it is 70 million that is put in there for bridge repairs and maintenance. It is over 1.2 billion that is in the budget this coming fiscal year for bridge maintenance. He said, take that away. Take that away. Now, people, I'm going to show you, right, how vicious the Prime Minister is. How vicious. And how deceitful also. Nigel Clark is. How deceitful Nigel Clark is. And I want you to understand, you understand capitalism. When we speak about capitalism, you know, I don't want people to get me wrong. Because we know that capitalism is the market as it relates to supply and demand. You understand? And the entrepreneurial ship that works through, you understand, capitalism. So when you hear me talking about capitalism, what I am actually speaking about is chronic capitalism through the process of nepotism, colonialism, and skullduggery. So I want people to particularly understand that I am not eating capitalism, the general market. No, because it's the market. So I'm not eating capitalism. What we are hitting whenever I'm talking about capitalism, we are eating chronic capitalism. We are that small interest group. You understand who align with the government, right? Dealing with nepotism, cronism, and skullduggery. So anytime you hear mystic sensation, speak of capitalism. You understand? For people who are following me, they will quite understand that what mystic sensation is addressing is crony capitalism. So let me say that clear. Now, watch this people now. Let me give you a better pronouncement as the, what the Prime Minister said. Because remember, you know, I know the tribe is not fixing up. Ah, uh, no, the tribe is not fixed. Them carry off a little anky punk if you treat the people them. Then carry um, a truck out there and then make sure say, the truck to turn over. And for the truck to turn over, that's it. Right? And then carry one long um, thing, one long piece of iron and that's it. You understand? To trick the people them and this is the way how the government behaving. People, let me tell you something, you know. Jamaica is broke. Jamaica is broke. Most of the monies that this particular government had gotten gone into their pockets. Yes, gone into their pockets as it relates to chronic capitalism. They get friend to do contracts, them friend will charge, them collect this and collect that. You understand? And and and, and some, some contract where you hear gone up in the billions of dollars. The billions of dollars. No, we could use one example, you know, for to show you what I am saying is 100% true. Right? Look on the mayor. Since we won the local government election, people, we could talk. Since we won the local government, um, government um, um, election, right? What the mayor is doing? The mayor had done, right, successful work. You understand? And none of it costs billions of dollars. What me and Swabia have done? People make a talk. We won the local government election. Right? As it relates to me and Swabia. Right? Remember before me and Swabia took over, you know? Remember, say, no, no fix it. Yeah, you have excretion running down town, raw sewage running down town, and the people they have to sip up that. That is how the Jamaican Labour Party representing people. Because the money what they're supposed to spend, right, in the constituency, gone into them pockets, them and them friend pockets. Project to be fixed, a majority of the money gone. We must spend on health care. 
right? And we know for sure the several factors that affecting healthcare. So when we look and we saw what 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 Mia Swabi had done with the little, with the little amount that he had, the little amount that Mia Swabi had, and so much that being accomplished, it's unbelievable. And when you look on the GLP, right, and the truth be told, that the Jamaican um, um, GLP administration had spent billions of dollars. Billions spent, you understand, as it relates to national security. Billions spent as it relates to healthcare. Billions spent all over the place. For what? And people cannot see. We are the billion spent. And may I swear it, spend a little, nothing rich billion dollar. And we see the progress from the little, the minute expenditure. Then how could may I swear it, achieve this? That's what I ask the question. Is it that may I swear it, have worked miracle? Or is it that, as what I define as it relates to the section of capitalism, crony capitalism is where the money is going? Later on in the program, later on in the program, we are going to touch about that Billy Lynch letter, and we're going to teach some people some stuff because I'm in a teaching mode tonight. And so then when we look, and the billions of dollars being spent. And we only can see it. It's a travesty. As it relates to the Jamaican Labour Party. A travesty. As it relates to this administration. And the little example that um, Mayor Stuebe um, had said. Mayor Stuebe, anywhere you're there, big up yourself. Big up yourself. And Mayor Swaby, before you take over, you had made the promises. And Mayor Swaby, you had delivered on all of your promises. Unlike you know who, unlike you know who, who had delivered on his first 100 days all what he had promised. And how many years after? How many years after? Nothing being delivered. Nothing being delivered. And now, these are the same people, my Jamaican brothers and sisters, coming to see third term and talking about they have a steady on, steady on on the economy, steady on on the economy. Nigel Clark know why he take away himself from the steady on. Nigel Clark know why he take away himself from the steady on, right? A budget shortfall that has not yet been fixed. And Nigel Clark look into the pipeline and see other things coming down. So I'm not blame Nigel Clark. What do you mean? Take away myself. What do you have to say about the music again? Dance and plan, take away yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Nigel Clark, follow the music, right? Nigel Clark, listen to um, Listen to Vegas. Yeah? And take away himself. Right? Because Nigel Clark know what to come in. Right? And some of them we are going to speak about. No. So let us get into program for trial. To show you, and let me tell you, let me tell Jamaican people this. Particularly, you understand, um, in Troy, in Trelawney, right? Under the Jamaican Labour Party administration, sorry to tell you, right, you are not going to get the bridge. Right? Not now. Not now. You understand? And the way all might be that bridge is going to fix is under the People's National Party administration. Only trust me, people. Remember me telling you. Now, look here, people. See the evidence, I know. So I'm not telling any lie. To show you how this man is wicked and lie. You understand? With a series of promises that he's coming out with now. People see the evidence, yeah? This is J.I.S., you know? This is the Jamaica Information Center service, sorry. So the Prime Minister can't come say, me fix sensation, 
they deal with misinformation and disinformation. So let us read from the Jamaica Information Service, right? The Prime Minister own entity. Now, you want to you, you, look at this paper. $80 million program for Troy Bridge in Trelawney. This is February 2018. Now. 2024 in the people. See the day now. I'm not telling no life on the Prime Minister. You know. A February 28, this. 2024. You know. And the Prime Minister said $8 million program for Troy Bridge in Trelawney. Right? Now, I could, could, could go on. The government is suspended. Me talk, me always talk about the futuristic reference for the Prime Minister. Always making him an in campaign. You know. The Prime Minister cannot say at any given time that we have done this. What the Prime Minister always speak about when my and lie had promised is to futuristically speaking. So you must understand the terminology, you know. When the Prime Minister speaking in the future tense, so you understand, and you don't know as it relates to the hundred days promise, none of them not deliver because they're still in the future tense. So the Prime Minister still speaking in the future tense. Let me go back and read it and make you understand so the Prime Minister is speak in the future tense. The government is to spend 80 million on Tribridge in Trelawney in the upcoming fiscal year. De fiscal year. Details of the undertaking are contained in the 2024-2025 estimate of expenditure. Let me stop right now. Let me stop right now. People, the previous document that is shown, you know, it was in the 2023-2024 budget, you know. See it now. It should now to show you how the Prime Minister is a goddamn old dirty canatis. Now the Prime Minister now the said 2024-2025. You know what? Me can go back. Me can go back the next document. Me can show the Prime Minister. This, what the Prime Minister do, if you remember what the Prime Minister said for one campaign, you know. You understand? Say him, him, him grew up in a one-bedroom house. And then for the next campaign, him grew up in a two-bedroom house. Now, come back now. From the first document, I'm going to show you now. The Prime Minister said him have it locked in the 2023-2024 budget expenditure you now. Expenditure you now. Now, look what we are reading now. Here it is. Details of the undertaking are contained in the 2024-2025 estimate of expenditure. Table in the house represented by finance doctor, um, the honorable Niger talk. There's nothing honorable about both of people. Take that document away. You understand what I'm saying? I only show Jamaican people the trickery. You understand? Okay, yes, yes, both of them already called. Just imagine the previous document that I show. The Prime Minister have it locked for the tribe bridge. Had it have it locked. In Parliament, it was the 2023 to 2024 budget. And still the tribe budget, still no fix it. <laughs> and now, from the JIS document that we shown a while ago, it shifts now to the 2024 2025 budget. Papa Jesus. Yes, speak up yourself, um, Daddy Bolo. What's going on, my bro? Blessing Bolo. Alright. Yes. As a as a the detail amount of money that is that has been unaccounted for under this administration. Okay. Documentation. all I ministry them would like to do a show up on that. All right. Um, yes, yes. Okay. And I am going to. And you touched on a point a while ago. I said the man I think um, earlier today. This man has become the, the poster boy of promises. Exactly. Exactly, boy. Just give us a little bit more time. We expect the thing in place. And then just come. Yes. 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 Yes.
Exactly. Like the only thing you hear me say I'm going to do this. That alone for disqualifying for every seat. Anyone thinking person must understand when somebody show you who them is built in them. Our oh, man for do that. I tell you what I'm going to do in a hundred days. And he, not, he hasn't given you one thing out of it. And hmm. then you have to ask yourself a question. Was any of those things tangible? Could you have done it in a hundred days? Could you have done it in a thousand days? Why do you do it? <laughs> You must understand the nature of the person we are dealing with people. Definitely. Hey, come, look at yourself, Bless up yourself, Ambola. Um, and people, remember, you know, may I ask to know, you understand, just step over Ambola, um, right, and endorse um, Bola, you understand, because, you know, Bola um, likes to um, break down the things and he do it, you know, quite skillfully. And I and I love I love his program, love his program. I don't stop follow um, Bola program. So people, let's go over there and that's it. Show him some love. You understand? Because Bola is one of us. So as Bola just said, and which um, Bola is right. Now, for, for what we know as it relates to Pamela Monroe, right? Now, Pamela Monroe, Monroe stated that um, there's a total of $1.7 trillion unaccounted for, right? And that happened as it relates to between three ministries right, which is the Ministry of Health, Ministry of Education, and no doubt there, the Office of the Prime Minister, $1.7 trillion. But as what Bolo said, you understand, I'm going to come back and, be, and, 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 and do a deep dive, you understand, um, with that, right? So again, big up yourself, Bolo, and as I said, people, just show Bolo some love, right? Now, so this is the thing that we are talking about, right? And the thing is just unbelievable in terms of how, you understand, the Prime Minister continues, right, to be conniving, continue to be deceiving, as if that there is, there, there is no, there, there is, there is an absence of social media. Social media, the medium that, you understand, are the mechanism, you understand, can deal with checks and balance. So the Prime Minister, I think, um, to me, Right, seems like the prime minister is just a wire, right? And so then the prime minister coming back with the dinosaurial politics. You understand the usual promises and 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 not deliver. That is what the prime minister cultured on. So people must understand. Remember, you know, that the prime minister promised as it relates to JPS. You understand that is going to bring in the big companies. Remember the prime minister. What, what the prime minister said, you know. He will be bringing in the big companies. And so then the rate of electricity, you understand, will reduce. And guess what, people? It gone up more and more and more and more and more. Right? And you tell me, these are some of the reasons why the prime minister are imploded in the poll. Right? For those who are following the prime minister, Right, and continue to be naive. I think it passed me a naivety. I think it's the situation gone so chronic that you have these people with their myopic view just cannot see beyond the green. So then, when I'm on the program, you know, I am not trying to reach those people, you know. So let me tell them straight. You understand? Let me tell them straight. When I am here, those people. But the myopic view, not the pyramid view, right? The, the, uh, the, call the word for me. Pandar panoramic view, right? Sometimes <laughs> my tongue is a tell so. Right? I am not trying, you understand, to reach, you understand, those people with the myopic view, right? You have to broaden your lenses. You must have the ability to do new things. You must say, wait, but wait there. The Prime Minister and I promised this in the 2023-2024 budget. You understand and say he would deliver. You understand and say he allocated the money already. Then what the Prime Minister will come back just and I want to talk about 2024-2025. Because what I'm telling the people that the amount of money that the Prime Minister had borrowed from IMF. You understand? These are one of the austerity measures that the Prime Minister cannot use none of those funds. You understand? To fix bridges. Those are 
That is one of the policies of the IMF. He can't use it. Right, so people need to understand when we talk about, when the Prime Minister talk about fiscal discipline, right, the Prime Minister don't know the definition of fiscal discipline. What is fiscal discipline? Let us ask them, let us argue people. What is fiscal discipline? I want to research it. Right? Because based on the Prime Minister performance and Nigel Clark performance, performance is Andrew Ones reducing as it relates to borrowing, Reducing the, the habit of borrowing. No, Andrew Wallace is not reducing the habit of borrowing. <laughs> Andrew Wallace is borrowing more and more and more. That is not fiscal discipline. Right? And fiscal discipline is how oh, you're reducing your borrowing. You understand? And make sure that you are dealing with the innovation. You understand? To produce more. The more you produce, we are on, we are on a system that the IMF tied us on. We are on a system where the, where, where the IMF, IMF tied us on that it seems like as long as we live, we are going to be indebted to IMF. So people never understand the significance, you know, when P.J. Patterson paid off the IMF and said, Tata, IMF. And where the Bruce Golden led administration brought us back into IMF. And yet when you hear the Prime Minister get up in a parliament, him and Nigel Clark, you know, and them stand up, them talk that they are the best performance over 24 years. Now you tell the people if this is a thing. Right? Even when the truth steering these people in their eyes, these people want what we call alternate and alternative truth. For us to believe the lies. So, so, so you are so confused that the lies appear to be truth. And the truthfulness appears to be like. That is where the Prime Minister is taking the country, confusing the country. Because remember, you know, any lending agencies, right? That lending a country money like the IMF, the World Bank, and you name it, the BRI, which is the Belt and Road Initiative, that is the China program, Chinese program. When the government is corrupt, they smile. People must understand, you know, each time he talk, no one people to understand. When the country is corrupt, IMF, the World Bank, BRI, they smile. Let me ask, why do they smile, Byron? Why do they smile? Let me answer rhetorically now. <laughs> they smile because you have difficulty. If your government is corrupt, they have difficulty in paying back the loan. So people, let me, let, me, let me suggest something to you. Our national debt, right? The totality of debt as it relates to money from the BRI, money from the World Bank, money from the IMF, the total debt is $2.3 trillion. I'm going to explain this to you. But when you look at our debt as $2.3 trillion, what Pamela Monroe is saying that $1.7 trillion is unaccounted for. So let us use some hypoth hypothetical scenarios. Now, if we have a government, right, that stay clear from corruption. And where we could have accounted now for the $1.7 trillion spent. Many of that gone into pockets, we know. Then we'll be able, right, to pay down our debt as opposed to service our debt. So I want people to understand the economics, you know, and the politics. Right? So then just consider people that whoo, if we have 1.7 trillion dollars that unaccounted for, what if we had accounted for the 1.7 trillion dollars? Then we wouldn't be just servicing our debt. We'd be actually now 
pin down our debt. Now, the evidence that we are only servicing our debt. Now, in two, that's why I said I'm in a very teaching mode tonight. Now, remember now that when Nigel Clark took over office, what was the debt? Right? What was the debt total, the total debt Nigel Clark started with? Let me remind the people. When Nigel Clark took over in 2018, right? The debt was $2 trillion. $2 trillion. Now, we have Nigel Clark took over from 2018 until now, and Nigel Clark tenor had, has not reduced that debt. That debt had now escalated to $2.3 trillion. <laughs> so by my simple mathematics, what happened to that? An additional $600 billion added to the debt. And so then that is one of the reasons why why we have seen the level of inflation. So the Prime Minister being disingenuous, coming out, trying to compare Portia Simpson time, right, as it relates to, you know, um, the, the, um, the, um, the, um, the pay that, you know, um, they, had, um, that they had raised during Portia Simpson time as opposed to um, his time, right? Now, when you look in Portia Simpson time, right, as it relates to um, $5,000, right, which was the limit um, where you can pay um, a worker, right? The inflation wasn't that high now, right? But you ask yourself the question, what that $5,000 could have purchased during Portia Simpson time? We're talking about 2000, right? 2016, right? What that $5,000, right, could have purchased? What the Prime Minister is not telling Jamaica that during Portia Simpson time, 2016, as it relates to the $5,000, right? The $5,000 carry more purchasing power. The Prime Minister is not speaking about purchasing power. The Prime Minister is so devious, so disingenuous, right? Trying to compare, you understand, the actual raise that he had given to $15,000. But the Prime Minister is not measuring the impact of the inflation, you understand? as it relates to the impact of the inflation, as it relates to this current time, and the impact of the inflation during Portia Simpson time. And so now when you measure that, as it relates to the impact of the inflation during Portia Simpson time, you'd now realize that the $5,000 in Portia Simpson time in 2016 carry more what we call purchasing power. You could now buy more things than now. So then if you pay, you get $15,000 for minimum wage. Right, I just remember the terminal. Right? So then when you compare a 2016 to show you how this ingenious Nigel Clark, when Nigel Clark get, um, get up in Parliament and we had raised the minimum wage to $15,000. Nigel Clark. Anyway, you know Nigel Clark, I hear me talking. You must have wondered where we come from. And God send me come to talk to my people then. And all them parliamentarian. Now. So when you get up in a parliament, and that's why I say I want to talk to Rastan Hyman and I should have Rastan Hyman on the program. So Rastan Rastan Hyman can talk to them in terms of what I'm saying. Somebody plug in for us so you can reach right? to us. So then when you talk about minimum wage, and you said it is the first in history and your brags and your, you know, your boosts and your talk about $15,000 being given to minimum wage. No, 
That is not the question, Nigel. Andrew Wallace, that is not the question. The question that needs to be asked, if the $15,000 that you are giving now equate to the same purchasing power as it was in 2016. No. No. So then your $15,000 that you are giving and you are bragging about is a breeze. People are suffering. That fifteen thousand dollars, for example, in a layman term, I want people to answer, um, to um, to understand. Maybe that fifteen thousand now can only buy three items. We are in two thousand and sixteen. That's five thousand dollars. You understand? Within that purchasing power and within that space, could I buy about ten pieces of items? How much the fifteen thousand dollars can buy now? So Nigel Clark, me class say you going to I am you know. You understand that because guess what? You can fool the people them sometimes. Not all the while you can fool the people. So when you look at the rate of inflation now, and now that our dollar is sliding, now BOJ have to spend 93 million dollars to catch up, to catch up the dollar because the dollar is a rock out. You understand? All of a sudden, the dollar, all of a sudden, the dollar turn harmony for Beris Aman in a rock away. All of a sudden, the Jamaican dollar turn harmony. You understand? The very harmony in a rock away. The dollar does a rock away, sir. Does a rock away, sir. You understand? And yet, Nigel Clark is so superb. Is the shining hammer after the man destroyed the goddamn economy. After they destroy the economy with them level of criminality. From SFL Union, it and people let me warn you, you know. let me warn you because I'm telling you right that PID allowed to investigate right what we hearing from now. Andrew only is prepared because me no say worse left to come. So let us look, oh, we still up on the bridge. Yeah? You understand? Let us play this clip. Let us play this clip. You still on the bridge, because it is so important that the people that caught up between Manchester and Trelawney they are suffering from 2021. Our Jamaican people that caught up between Manchester and Trelawney are suffering. Right? Listen to the Prime Minister. You listen to the Prime Minister. ...and lengthy process to repair the Troy Bridge makes the case for the urgent need for review and reform. The bridge collapsed in August 2021 during the passage of Tropical Storm Grace. The bridge, which was built in 1869, served residents of Trelawney, Manchester, and St. Elizabeth, including students of the nearby Troy High and Troy Primary School. The bridge represents critical infrastructure for the residents and there is unanimity that the bridge must be replaced. Under the current public investment management guidelines, however, the project is required to go through a full public investment appraisal, appraisal process. This is even before we get to procurement. This has resulted in significant delays in implementations. However, today I can finally announce that a contract has been awarded and work will begin early in this first quarter of the coming financial year. Paper? Paper? You know hear that? What the Prime Minister said? Today, he can proudly announce that a contract has been awarded and so then you should look for work coming in the first financial year. Think of what I'm saying, people. <laughs> and you listen to me. Think of what I am saying. And see the people. See the people. That financial year, almost on completion, and nothing done to the tribe bridge. 
Me only want to see the evidence. And on mystic sensation, they said, listen. I brought forward the clip. I played it for you to see. So then, if you want to make the prime minister sponge out your brain, because it seems like someone who wants to put, who go on here, the prime minister say, hey, and who just soap it and absorb it and believe it. You understand? And so then the level of naivety is on full display. And so then I want for you to understand who you are dealing with. You are dealing with a pathological liar. And you own this is pathologically mendacious. Can't believe a word what he said. Or Nigel Clark. Because Nigel Clark is his defender. And they will defend him. Because they are defending the party. They are not defending the Jamaican people. Do you, do you imagine that if you and I live in that area and the main bridge and that bridge is our main course of transportation main route right we have been suffering just put yourself right just empathize with the situation empathize with the situation and see if now you can sympathize with the people in um in, um and the Manchester and Chilani um, land. So when you put yourself in the people's shoes, you can feel what the people are feeling. So you know what to sympathize with the situation. Yeah. Right? You've been there. And from 2021, all you have been getting, right, is lies, promising deceit. The tribe which is still there, asking. For Andrew Holness, right, to fix the situation. And as we speak today, that situation has not been fixed. Here are some of the complaints that the community, right, is experiencing. Judgment to go on before they can do something, because I look like them love excitement. Come with that, me can say, because right now, it's very dangerous. Right now, it's not in the name Coach Park, which again, you know, it's in the name Death Valley. Hello, good afternoon, Mr. Warmington. Yes, yes sir. William's calling back from the Observer. Uh, uh, hello? Yes, sir. William's calling back from the Jamaica Observer and Mandible. You were driving this morning. I'm sorry, I'm driving again. Is that the only bridge in Jamaica that needs to pay for the repair? No, it is not, but I just want to get an update. The bridge in Jamaica that needs repair or um, replacement, you call me about the about bridge? I'm just seeking an update on the matter, Mr. Warmington. I'm not to give you no update at all. I'm asking that is the only bridge in Jamaica that needs replacement or repair. Well, that's not the only one. A lot of them have to be going to other schools, um, further down in Cowick Park or further down in Balaclava and so. Additional stress on the parents to find money so, to send them. And a lot of them live close by the bridge here that they can just come down to the school. But they can't because of the, the water that is there. And it's getting worse. I can tell you that I confirm the minister in charge, Mr. Clifford Warminger, and I have received copies of the design for the new bridge, which has been completed, and they are now doing a copy of the bridge. Regarding the Troy Bridge, um, and uh, I'm following it. I am, I've been briefed that the designs are complete. Uh, my understanding is that they're about to go to procurement soon. So, you know, it's, a, it's, it's not a situation of which we are proud. And, and I, I must, uh, I, I mean, I saw your, your outburst. Uh, I saw the representation made by um, our speaker. Uh, and uh, Madam, Madam Speaker, I, I wish to say that the government of Jamaica uh, takes this situation very seriously. 
and uh, it is it is not our intention for the people to believe that their plight is not considered as serious and therefore madam speaker i'm going to be personally visiting troy i will make the arrangements and we have been moving to fast track the arrangements And Mark Golding is joining Northwest Manchester Member of Parliament, Mikhail Phillips, in demanding the government fix the Hector's River Bridge in Troy, Manchester. Phillips, who is also the opposition's works spokesman, maintains the absence of the bridge poses a risk for residents. Both men towards the community on Wednesday. Here is Celine Campbell with more. This zipline looking contraption is not for leisure. It's a necessity. The centuries-old Hector's River Bridge in Troy, Manchester, collapsed during Tropical Storm Grace in 2021 that forced residents to improvise. The structure was a literal and figurative bridge between Manchester and Trelawney. Residents cross over daily because they must, grateful each time. There's no mishap. Then one bridge never hang up on it, man. I nearly join, man. I look at thing in hold it, man, for our next man comes and join, but that's in a dead brother. So a whole lot of people nearly lose their life. See. You understand me, I say? So we want to bridge, we want to bridge. We want to bridge and we are telling the Prime Minister so we want to bridge better. Over a year ago, the government said it would replace the bridge during the 2022-2023 fiscal year that ended in March. Because it was not done, People's National Party President Mark Golding went to see it for himself. And apparently it's now at the stage where they're still trying to decide whether or not it's an emergency situation. Wow. But, you know, it clearly is something which needs to be addressed very quickly because this is a vital uh, route for the people living here in Northwest, on the border with um, South Trelawney, is it? Yeah, South Trelawney. So this can't wait any longer. Northwest Manchester MP Mikhail Phillips says his campaign for a new bridge is legitimate as the makeshift structure is a clear and present danger. The people of Manchester and Trelawney are actually suffering because of the lack of a bridge here. The MP is not convinced there is any urgency to fix the bridge, even though the alternative is seen as a death trap. Children have fell in the river. There was a father who jumped in the river, not even knowing what was underneath there, uh, to try and save his own child. And it, it, the frustration is that it's something that should be an emergency should not have taken two years. If it is that you're trying to victimize me, then mm. that is another case. But don't victimize the people at the same time yeah. when you're trying to victimize me because I'm not a member of the government. Yeah. And right now, after two years, that is what it's feeling like, mm -hmm. victimization. The PNP president brushed aside the suggestion that Phillips should have resorted to other means to replace the bridge. It is squarely the government's responsibility, like any other major piece of infrastructure is, to address. And there's plenty of precedent for the repair or replacement of bridges that have been damaged or destroyed and by the government of, of the day. And this is why we're continuing to call for it. A new bridge would reportedly cost $160 to $180 million. National Works Agencies, Communications and Customer Services Manager Stephen Shaw told CVM News the design was completed. It is now with the Ministry of Finance's Public Investment Assessment Branch, which means it's not yet an approved project. Celine Campbell for CVM News. Okay, so people, I want you to hear that, you know. I want you to hear that, right? Now, as I call to Michael Phillips, right, seems to say that politics is playing out I um, mean, that, and that is one of the reasons why it's also been prevented from um, being fixed. But whatever, whatever the situation is, it is affecting those people in that area, and the people need the support, need the bridge. And as we speak, people, right, the people, right, still have no bridge after that bridge collapse from 2021. It's really serious. Now, people, we are going to get into the art of some issues here. And before I play these four clips, I want to speak to you a bit. And we are going to make you understand as it relates to, remember, 
we had spoken about chronic capitalism. Spoken about chronic capitalism. And I think you understand, you know, what I mean about chronic capitalism as it relates to, you know, um, you have players, right, within the system that aligns with the government. You understand where nepotism and cronyism, right, is the order of the day and skullduggery. Now, so I am not eating capitalism, which is the general market as it relates to supply de um, demand and all entrepreneur working working in that space. So that I am not hitting that. I am not hitting that. All right. Now let me explain this now where I'm going. Now, remember we spoke earlier, right? About the IMF, the World Bank, right? And the BRI, which is the Belt and Road Initiative, right? As it relates to China um, the um, Chinese program in terms of lending money, right, um, to countries that you know require such loan. Now, I said earlier that when you have corrupted government, these lending agencies benefit. Benefit in the instances because the difficulty in that country paying back the loan struggle. And so then a particular lending agency has now the ability to dictate, right? And in some instances like China, China might say, okay, all right, I want that area, right, and that area, and so then the government, you know, um, will hand over, you understand, as it relates to ease the burden, right, of the debt, right? In instances, you see that China, right, is managing, our war, right? Now, that is a dangerous trend. That's a very dangerous trend. When you have a situation where you have external entity managing your ports, that cannot look good. People, come on. That cannot look good. So then, you have to understand the principle, right? of the whole ideology as it relates to these advanced countries who are offering loans to small countries. Because at the end of the day, in terms of right, the deal, the deal has to appease them. And so then they are going to always come out positive at the end of the deal. So it is very important we are a country, right? As it relates to the government, as to make sure, say, if you're borrowing money, right, you use that money wisely. Because you have countries that borrow money, right, and use it wisely, right, and better off. So it can be done, right? So we are not eating that. But we are just speaking on, 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 on before I introduce a clip. So the clip that I'm going to play, I want you to listen keenly, keenly, and you will understand everything, what I am saying, right? Because as it relates to the economic structure, it is not designed, right, to so much, right, help underdeveloped country. It is designed to help the lenders themselves as it relates to making more profit. So it's also geared as it relates to being profit um, driven. And at the end of the day, they are at the advantage. And that is one of the reasons why this clip is important in terms of what I am going to play. We will not allow Sub-Saharan Africa to escape that. Okay, we do everything to keep Sub-Saharan Africa where it is also impoverished. This this is Professor Dr. Howard Nicholas, a Sri Lankan economist and social scientist. In the year 2015, Dr. Nicholas gave a presentation at the International Institute of Social Studies, ISS, of Erasmus University of Rotterdam, where he is also a senior lecturer in economics. Here, he is explaining why and how the Western Europeans do everything in their power to impoverish Africa and forever 
keep them poor. Starting with the why. The main reason why majority of developing countries and Africa, specifically the Sub-Saharan Africa region, have always been a target for the West condemnation is for the raw material production. In his words, Dr. Howard says, the Sub-Saharan Africa has been fundamental to the global prosperity of advanced countries, therefore has to be kept poor. Africa historically, Sub-Saharan Africa has been fundamental to the global prosperity of the advanced countries. Okay, and Africa had a role to play. It has a role as a raw material producer. We will not allow Sub-Saharan Africa to escape that. Okay, we do everything to keep Sub-Saharan Africa where it is, also impoverished. It's absolutely vital for the prosperity of everyone else. And since colonization, there has always been plans to stop Africa from aggressively industrializing. These are the six economic structures put in place that keep Africa poor. Hi, call me Louis. This is my spot. This is spot. One. Foreign aid. Here's where money and weapons is given to keep Africa repressive regime systems in power. Okay, we give them aid. Aid for what? Actually, we give them aid to keep repressive regimes in power. That's all. Okay, we're not giving them aid for much more except a little bit of infrastructure to make sure those raw materials get to the ports and aren't gotten out of the ground. But for the most part, we give repressive regimes money and power and guns to keep that system going. This is what it's fundamentally about. All the hypocrisy about transparency and democracy and bullshit like that, it's all bullshit. <laughs> And at least the Chinese don't enter into that bullshit. They say, we don't care about the whole political environment. We just give the money. Okay? And it's for raw material extraction. Period. Debts and foreign loans. Here money is lent to raw material producing countries to gain control of them with debt streams. Economic hitmen will also be sent to execute those leaders who refuse to accept the loans. I was telling some of my students today, was it today or yesterday, about Confessions of an Economic Hitman. Do you remember this? Have, have any of you heard of this one? Confessions of an Economic Hitman. It's a book written by John Perkins, who used to work for a very nebulous, opaque bank. No one had ever heard of this bank. But it was formed in the 1950s by the IMF, the CIA, and the American State Department. And it had only one job to lend money to developing countries that were raw material producers in order to indebt them. Once you are in my debt, I control you. Okay? And this bank had 4,000 employees. But no one ever heard of this bank, you see. But it would go to country after country offering loans. And if the president did not accept the loan, they were killed. And he gives two examples of presidents who were killed when they did not accept the loan. You see, the lending is also very important to trap the country. It's very important. It's part of that process. I teach in Suriname, and Suriname in recent times had a huge foreign exchange reserve, so big they didn't need to borrow money. And then one of my students who was very high up in government, he said, you know, the IMF is trying to convince us to borrow money from foreigners. Why? I thought, duh, you know, sorry about this, but, you know, this is the game. And in the end, Suriname did borrow this money because the IMF said, if foreigners lend to you, then everyone will think Suriname is such a strong economy that foreigners are interested in lending to you. You understand? Before Lula came to power, you know, the previous president in Brazil, Cardoso, 
his predecessor, took a gigantic international loan. Mm -hmm. No necessity for taking the loan. Why? Because once I catch you with the debt strings, I hold you forever. You are my prisoner. Okay, so debt has been this huge spider's web which has trapped sub-Saharan Africa and keeps them held there. Aid, debt. Monopoly buying structures. Here, few Western multinationals will collude between themselves and said to buy major raw materials while also setting the standards of what they need. From here, this corporation will have control and keep the prices extremely low. This is for all raw materials and basic agricultural goods produced by developing countries. There are only four or five Western multinationals that buy all those goods and they collude between them. So if you take any major product, these Western multinationals, they collude between them. Even if we go down to banana production, we had a PhD done here at the ISS, and the person showed that the four or five major multinationals, they collude, and in order to make sure they control is total, what they do is they force all the producers to pr produce the same uniform banana. You know, the crap you buy in the West and has no taste at all. You go to any developing country, you know how a banana tastes, don't you? There's so many of them, lots of varieties, but we only market one or two types. So we have control, you see. If you don't produce at the price I want you to produce, I go to the next country. You see, we get control. So these buyers, they impose that control and they keep pushing the prices down and down and down. Okay, this is the game. No one says anything about it. There are no commissions of inquiry to say, this is illegal what you're doing. The WTO has nothing to say about this. But sorry to say, you know, if banana prices rose 10 times, especially for people like me who love bananas. Okay, I protest. I like my living standards. Okay? It's the same with all the other raw materials, you see. We're all benefiting, we're complicit. We're actually complicit in this because we will protest and shout out if the situation ever changed. International Economic Institutions. Here the rich create the institutions to explicitly control the poor countries by keeping them producing raw materials and making sure they have recurrent balance of payment problems. IMF, World Bank, WTO. We always think evil creatures. Horrible. It's not. It's just economics. It's economic warfare. The rich declare war on the poor. It happens everywhere. It happens in a country. The rich control the government. Of course they do. You really believe you have democracy? Come on. You know, I mean, grow up. This is not about people living in democratic systems. What we have is the rich control. The rich set up these institutions explicitly to control the poor countries. And they don't give them much room for maneuver. Which, incidentally, when the IMF starts talking of poverty alleviation, you should also understand that there's another game there also starting to play, which I'm going to come back to later. But what do these institutions do? What does the IMF do? What is structural adjustment about? It's about making sure countries keep producing what we want them to produce. We make sure they have recurrent balance of payments problems. You notice these countries never get out of balance of payments problems. You notice that? Whereas countries that never took IMF support are always out of balance of payments problems. But the countries that are continuously getting advice and support by the IMF, they're always in balance of payments problems. Why? Because that's the way we keep our stranglehold on them. Destruction of food self-sufficiency. Started by colonialization and continued by World Bank. Once one has control of your food supply, he has control over you. 
colonization started it. Okay, one of the most important things is we destroy food self-sufficiency. Okay, and the World Bank continued it. They forced most countries to eliminate all food subsidies and food support. Okay, because once you don't produce your own food, I increase my control of it. How do we know this? Well, very funny thing happened some years ago. Not so funny, actually. It involved starvation of a large number of people in Malawi. Okay, many of you could remember this because it was really tragic. But the Malawian finance minister, who was under terrible threat at the time, suddenly broke ranks and he said, well, do you know why we had this famine? Because one of the conditions of the loan given by the World Bank was we destroyed all our grain surplus stocks. Why? Because remember, we want you dependent. 1970s, the US Senate, the US Congress said, we will not allow Latin America to produce their own food. We will start a strategy involving the IMF and the World Bank to destroy food self-sufficiency of Latin America. Then they will indeed be our true backyard. And that's exactly what they've done. Look at all the Latin American countries. Look at them. They used to be food self-sufficient, but they're no longer food self-sufficient. Now, here comes the kicker. This is the beautiful part of it. I'm, I congratulate them. You know I admire them because they do it so well. Okay? I, I know it sounds really perverse, but we have now in the WTO something called the Agreement on Agriculture. Okay? You know what that Agreement on Agriculture states? It says, if you don't have any subsidies, you're not allowed to put these subsidies on food. But if you have subsidies and income support for food production, you can keep them. Who has all the subsidies and income support? US, Europe. The largest budgets in the world for supporting their farmers are Europe and US. But the World Bank and IMF have destroyed all those subsidies. You see, all those subsidies have been destroyed. And now we're telling these countries, you don't have subsidy, tough luck. You know, you see, we're keeping them dependent. We're keeping them on a string. Poor school curriculums. Destructive Western curriculums, such as doctrine of comparative advantage, which teach Africa's destiny is to produce raw materials. And I pray that to show you that Nigel Clark going to the IMF and where you have people applauding Nigel Clark. What Nigel Clark had done, people, is hurt Jamaica economy. Now you understand the fundamental difference, our differences. When Michael Manley has to take on the big giants in the first world country, in raising our bauxite levy, raising our bauxite levy, because at the time we were getting $25 million per year. But what Michael Manley had done was to increase the bauxite levy and where we start to get $200 million per year. That is what Michael Manley had done. And we have seen maximum benefit. We have seen where Michael Manley when was able as a way to teach or, teach or level education for many of those who are criticizing now, get it free. Who remember those times as it relates to let of us benefit as a result of the increase in the backside levy. Let us make the comparison now, ladies and gentlemen. What Nigel Clark had done. Nigel Clark had zero the backside levy. And so those big players in IMF, right, like Chapa 
and those big players. They applaud him for that. People, we need to be careful. They applaud him for that because Nigel Clark single handedly damaging our economy. Damaging our economy. The position that Nigel Clark left us in is that we will continue to be dependent on the IMF. And so then they can have control as long as they want. So you have to understand the significant reason now as to when P.J. Patterson finished with the IMF and said, Tata, IMF, you realize how important that was. It is the same Nigel Clark, the same Andrew Holness, pointing, talking about 18 years of the People's National Party. But those were 18 years of success. 18 years of success. The Andrew Oldless led administration want to use alternative truth. And so then to confuse the voters and make the matters more compound is that the Andrew Oldless led government is ensuring, is ensuring that we stay in debt as it relates to the level of corruption that we are indulged in. We owe $2.3 trillion and $1.7 trillion unaccounted for. How does that serve us well? Ask the question. How does that serve us well? So let me show you an example of what the professor has been saying that as much given to us so that we can continue in the demand. And so then it is important, and let me say this because I want people to understand where I am going. When you are dealing with the IMF, you have to be prudent. Your government have to be prudent. One of the main items when you are dealing with the IMF your government cannot be corrupted. Cannot be corrupted because that will all you as long as what the IMF won. And this is what Andrew Hornet had done. Right? To cripple our nation. Cripple our nation. And Nigel Clark and Andrew Hornet, because they don't want this to be discovered, they will burn down the bridge, burn down the criminal justice system. Right? As you see, they are making move, judiciary review, you understand, to remove the Corruption Act as it relates to illicit enrichment. Why? Because they don't want the truth to establish how corrupted they are and the level of criminality that they have done and to know how far they have set back the country, reverse, reverse, what Portia Simpson had done. 